All right, this is NewHampshireCrossCountry.com, powered by Runner's Alley, coming at you with the 2020 New Hampshire Girls Coach of the Year, Nick Piotti of the Dover Green Wave. How, how did that sound to you, Nick? It sounded pretty good. It's a 15-year career. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, so talk about that. 15 years at Dover. You know, how did you get started running? Just give the give the people a little bit of a background about your running background and how you got into coaching and that kind of thing. I started running in the fifth grade when I got cut by the soccer team, and uh, that led me to when I cut at high school. It led me to UNH, um, and then that led me to a substitute job at Dover High School, and that went into a teaching career. And then I inherited the team the next year uh, from Dean Truax. So. Oh wow, Tony Truax's dad, you'll see that name on the New Hampshire history or cross country on Lancer timing. So in Winnicott, who you're, who were you coached by? Um, so it's interesting, I was coached in middle school by Ozzy, who coaches at Winnicott now. Uh, Jay Dameron was uh, my coach uh, in high school. And, uh, and then obviously the UNH coaches, there's some times where they were all in the building at the same time we were over at indoor track. So it's kind of a cool situation. So you're coached by Coach Belanger at, at UNH? And Coach Hopler. He coached the guys as well at that time. So you had some great influences. Yeah, a lot of my uh, philosophies and a lot of things that I do come from the people that I've worked with. Okay, all right. Well, let's, let's talk about the team a little bit. It's first time you guys have been ranked, 15 years that you've been there, yeah. first time in history of the school, and I was looking at New Hampshire history across country, and the last time Dover won a title of any sort was when a very famous person, Kathy Shiro, was in high school back in 82, 83, I believe it was. Um, speak to me about what that means to your girls, and, and I'm sure you've, you've educated them on the history, and, and um, I know that we talked like mid-season, and I said, oh, you're making some noise, and you, and you said, please don't rank us yet, <laughs> and, um, and then obviously we had no choice. It, I couldn't abide by what you asked, but, um, or the committee couldn't. Speak to that. You know, how special is that to be ranked for the first time and ever? Yeah, so this is a really special group of girls that, especially the, the two seniors that um, have been on the team kind of actually three with Sam as well um, so Sam Stone uh, Katrina Breen and Sarah Jolly they've really put a lot into the program over the past four years and uh, with that leadership um, you know it was super special to them to kind of have that that moniker of all of a sudden they were ranked all of a sudden they're the first team that I've ever coached to make me to champions girls or boys and, uh, wow, so 15 years at least that, that Dover girls or boys have not made me a champions either. Yep. Yeah. Wow, and, congratulations. And I think that you know we've been that team that's always been ninth or eighth or seventh or whatever the last spot was that didn't get in. We've been that a bunch of times. So I, I don't know what went differently this year. We didn't do anything different. Same workouts, um, the same philosophy. Um, even through COVID, we just tried to do the best we could to... Uh, to just keep on going, pushing through every day. And I think they took that to heart over the summer. And I think that probably was the difference maker. Yeah, speak to that a little bit regarding your approach during COVID, like last spring, and because you're the track coach also. And, you know, I, I know we've all had kind of, it was dependent upon our community and what our protocols were. But um, what was kind of your approach with that, um, especially in the summer and then obviously in the fall? Well, last spring we had zero contact, most like everybody did. So I really took it upon myself to get into social media a lot more. So what I did was I would write workouts week by week and project that to the kids through Google Classroom. And I would do the workout myself. I would go down to the track and run four by a mile or whatever the workout was for that day. And I'd spike up and I'd do everything I could to show them that if I was going to be as committed to this, that they could be as committed as well. And. Um, you know, unfortunately, awesome. that led to me getting hurt because I'm old. <laughs> but uh, but I think that not maybe, that old, Nick. Not that old yet, bud. I think that maybe that that probably helped a lot to sort of motivate, and um, that trend continued through the summer. Now, even though I wasn't able to continue pushing myself through the summer as hard as I was, I think that that kind of 
hopefully at least got some motivation under the, the seniors and then they were able to portray that to the to the three freshmen that came in and so that's kind of what i'm hearing because you said you didn't change much about approach and things like that and that's great to have your belief and in, in your philosophy but i'm hearing like this these seniors might have been kind of special they, yeah, they as were. far because i i know during during these times you really depend upon the leadership of kids that are already on the team. So I, I'm hearing that as the big difference. Yeah. Talk to us about your three freshmen too. You know, I mean, it's, you, you guys have a bright future ahead of you. I mean, you mentioned before your top five are all returning. You know, you can never count on it. It's never a guarantee, but they definitely learned some great leadership from your three seniors. Talk to us about a little bit about the three freshmen that came in and, and others that are returning. Well, I have uh, two juniors returning and then the three freshmen that are returning as well. Uh, the two juniors in, in Bree Haley and Ashlyn Smith. So Ashlyn was our number one all year, um, except for the very last two meets where, where Izzy sort of took the reins. Um, Izzy McIntyre was my number one freshman. And I think any other year, my number two freshman, Allison, would have been a number one. Um, so it's just kind of really fortunate that both of them are here at the same time. Wow. Um, a, a lot of times our our talent is sort of spread out between, um, you know, year to year. You know, I'll have one good kid and then another good kid. Um, they're all coming in at the same time, which is really kind of a, a special thing. And then our last freshman, um, Evangeline Alexander, she uh, she kind of locked down that fifth, sixth spot for us. And uh, so she'll be huge next year. She'll be the one that's sort of taking the place of, of one of our seniors. Wow. Wow, so you have a, like a maybe a green line going here. <laughs> yeah, you know? maybe a long green line. Yeah, long green line. What high school is that from? Nick, put you on the spot. Oh, <laughs> uh, California. But no, I come on. Uh, York. Yo, York. Yes, Illinois. You're right, you're right. So, um, last little bit here. What was like kind of the focus, the theme? And I know you, you talked a lot about the kids and how they handled it. But as a coach, you know, coach of the year. What was kind of what you, what did you try to teach through? through the the situation we all were in but especially at dover high school you know never being ranked before you knew you had a little something going on you know what was that theme you tried to teach or what you what did you try to teach them or what did you use to be honest the biggest thing that we tried to do all year long was to not get shut down there was always that constant fear in our minds that this would be the last day or this would be the last day so um, you know we got calls all through the year that you know the runners are out, they're not wearing their masks, the runners are doing this. And I told um, my kids over and over again, we're the face of the community. We go out in there and they see us and um, we just have to be better than everybody else. We have to be more masked, we have to be more conscientious of how far apart we are. And we have to just do a really good job to put Dover High School in a position where not only we can continue, but football and soccer, uh, volleyball and all the other sports that were going at the time could also continue because you know, people drove by our fields, but you know, we were out running in our community and we have, you know, city of Dover, we're in the yeah. city all the time. Yeah. So uh, it was a really big challenge to keep them motivated, to keep the masks on and yeah. um, do all that stuff. And, and I think that that was a true testament to the, to the leadership as well. You know, I can't be on every run, I can't be biking everywhere. So I know that when they went out, they were doing their absolute best to not only train, but to, uh, um, but to, uh, to keep the protocols going so that we could you know we could continue our season that's awesome that's awesome so day by day you never know when the last day is i think that's been the mantra for a lot of schools but obviously dover girls cross country um took that to heart and and that's why you're standing where you're at all right the kids get a chance to do this nick and i didn't even tell you i was going to ask you to do this but you got to give a shout out to or two who, who would you give a shout out to because this is pretty big for a coach coaching career yeah um i i guess i'll give a shout out to the girls seniors they were they were probably the, the highlight of the year um, I'll give a shout out to Tyler because you know his season continues on um, even now and um, and I'll give a shout out to my assistant coach so this is the first time in 15 years that I've had an assistant coach on the staff who was paid um, so Allison Matthews she teaches at the, the middle school and uh, she was able to get out and run with some of the kids and you know just having another set of eyes another body um, to be a motivator and, and stuff like that. So shout out to her.
Well, Nick, I think other schools should hear that because a, a, a lot of coaches need the help. And I, I know we have a lot of great help at Coe Brown. And when you have a great assistant coach like that, that's safer for the kids and it's better for the kids. So, yeah. hey, congratulations again. Once again, this is New Hampshire CrossCountry.com, powered by Runner's Alley. We're with the 2020 Girls Coach of the Year, Nick Piotti. Thank you.